So about nine months ago, I purchased myself a Seek thermal camera. And it's pretty good. It has a lot of issues with being in the cold. It has a 206 by 156 image sensor. So it's pretty low quality, but it's pretty good for a thermal camera. Well, I just found out about another thermal camera for phones. It's called the Thermap camera. Uh, I fucking hate this tripod. Oh God. This is the cheap one that folds up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna get myself a quick connector for my camera so I can just have a you know what? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna get myself some quick connectors. Like ooh, not not for forty bucks. I'll find one. But I'll keep that tab open so I'll find one. Just so I can quickly take off a cam my camera so I don't have to keep unscrewing it and it's, just, it's a pain in the butt. Well anyway, so the Thermap camera costs like 2000 bucks, but it is a 384 by 288 image sensor and one of them runs at 25 frames per second. One of the main issues I have with, it, with the Seek Thermal camera is that it's just very low frames per second as along with being one, a, 256, a 206 by 156 resolution. So that's pretty cool. I think it would be a bad idea to get that camera because I believe that this came out in like 2014 about the same time as this. It's weird. It's like the the FLIR 1, the Seek Thermal, and the Thermap all came out in the same year I think? I don't know. The other issue I have with the Thermap camera is that it only reads up to like 120 degrees Celsius. This goes up to like, what, 400 degrees Celsius? I don't know, that's so weird. Uh, 330 degrees Celsius, okay. That's pretty good. I would really like to have up to several thousand degrees Celsius. That would be amazing. Someday in the future, maybe I'll have like a 1080p, 60fps minus 100 to 1000 degrees celsius thermal camera but that's gonna be in decades maybe like a century from now so i might not even end up getting to have one but to be honest this is almost good enough for me to buy for my videos because having a thermal camera is really nice especially this one has a better quality image on it I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself like a requirement. I want to have this camera whenever they come out with 640 by 480. Basically four times the pixels. Whenever they're able to put a VGA onto a small camera that will connect to a cell phone, I'll probably get it. I'll probably, I probably won't mind spending 2000 bucks for it. Because right now it's like 15,000 bucks you have to spend for 640 by 480 that's good quality and mobile and able to record audio and video onto a phone. Or in general record audio and video. And at 25 hertz, you know? Yeah. So I don't want to get this now. I, th I think this would be a bad idea to get it now. But I think that we're definitely getting along the way to really cool thermal cameras. If you really could have a 1024 by 768 camera sometime, that would be amazing. Thermal cameras are just so much fun. Except for the FLIR thermal cameras. I had a friend that, that, that bought the, the th FLIR like cell phone camera adapter and it's it's a piece of shit. It really is, because it just has an 80 by 60 pixel image chip, but that image chip, they try to fake higher resolution by adding, and by having a VGA 
visual light camera over getting video and overlaying it over that thermal 80 by 60 pixels and so sure they bring up the contrast and stuff but if you're in a totally dark room you're only getting 80 by 60 and not counting it looks like shit it really does the seek camera looks so much better I don't know. It's kind of like computers because I don't need to have the newest and best thing, but I want to upgrade like every five or ten years. SD card got full. Thankfully, this morning I bought two 16 gigabyte SD cards. They're Lexars. Actually, I guess this is a Lexar too. Never mind. Interesting. But yeah, so. I like to upgrade things every five to ten years. I don't like getting them. I don't like having the latest and greatest. I just like updating it every so often. Like for instance, my computer. I I enjoy getting a new computer every five years. Although I think this computer is going to last me a lot longer than five years, because there's so much more scalability to this. I still haven't finished upgrading it. I'm going to upgrade the graphics card on this to like a 750 Ti. I'm going to have it outside the case, and then. Whenever something better than the 750 Ti comes out that will be in a small form factor, like in, say, five or six years, I'll take off the like external graphics card, I'll put in that tiny graphics card that's more powerful in the future, and then it, it'll all be a nice, teeny, tiny little computer. It'll be really nice, because if I had a big computer, then it would always be big. With this one, though, as time goes on, it'll get smaller as I can fit more stuff into it. And the processor being an i7 4790 with, like, I think it only has 8 gigabytes of RAM right now, but I can upgrade that to 32 gigabytes. And to be honest, as long as I have 256 megabytes, I'm happy. I played Final Fantasy XIV, the first version, on 256 megabytes, even though it recommends like 2 gigabytes. Or 2 gigabytes is the minimum, and it recommends like 6 gigabytes for best. And that worked fine. But yeah. I would like to upgrade my thermal camera, but nothing really, no real good next upgrade is available. So I'll probably just stick with it for a long time until I break it or whatever. So that works out. I think I'm going to hit the hay, but I might listen to a podcast. I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya.